Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got part 10 of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, during some of the segments of last week's show, you may have noticed a little bit of a weird uh, kind of a striping going down the screen. What had happened with that is I had installed a new light over my bench and the frequency of those LEDs interfered with the digital filming. So I've since taken that light out and replaced it. So if that bothered some of you guys, sorry about that, but it's been replaced and we're good to go now. We also left last week's show on a wicked cliffhanger where we were just about to do our front grill uh, in one piece instead of the glued in slats that they had. And that's where we're going to start this week's show, kind of carrying on where we left off. So let's head over to the bench and get today's show started. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the grill in one piece. And what we're going to need for that is a piece of 3 16th thick walnut. Well, I didn't have any 3 16th thick um, walnut, but I did have 1 8th and I'm okay with that. So this is what we're going to use. And we've cut it to be the same size as the grill back, which is two and a half by two and an eighth. And we can just test that to make sure that it fits in our grill frame. And it does, but it's pretty boring. It's pretty plain. It doesn't have any grill marks. What we're going to do is on the side here, I'm going to take my T rule. I'm going to place marks all the way across one side in increments of 1 16th of an inch. Well, you guys have seen me do this before. And what I have is a 1 16th diameter router bit. It is raised to be 1 16th of an inch above our tabletop, and I have a sacrificial fence installed. Guys, these marks, all I'm going to do is come into the first group. I'm going to leave 1 16th of an inch, and I'm going to route. I've set my fence so that it's going to route right in that 1 16th groove. So I'm going to make one pass here, and then I'll show you what to do next. And with that one routed, there is no need to change our setup right now. All we're going to do is rotate this 180 degrees and we will make another pass. And once that pass is done, you will have two identical 1 16th of an inch wide, 1 16th of an inch deep dados. Um, that are equally spaced from the edge of the board. So all I'm going to do now is place our piece up against the fence. We're going to adjust our fence, leaving 1 16th of an inch gap, and then we're going to route the next one. Turn it 180 degrees, route, readjust. We're going to continue with that until we get all of these grooves routed for our front grill. And it doesn't take very long with some careful measuring and some careful setup to get this. And of course, we're just going to place this inside of our grill frame and you'll end up with something like that. Now, because this is a little bit on the thin side, um, I wanted this to be a little thicker. In fact, I wanted this to be the same thickness as what the original would have been, provided that I would have made the grill back and all the grill trim pieces. I'm going to be adding some spacers on the back when I do glue this in to be able to raise it up just a little bit. You'll never see the spacers. No one will be the wiser, unless of course they watch this video, in which case it's gonna be very obvious what I did. But guys, what we're going to do at this point now is we're going to take our frame and we're going to glue it onto the front of our engine body, just like this. We're going to glue it lining up our edges as best we can. You really want to get the best alignment there that you can possibly get. And once we get that glued in, we're going to take our grill that we just made and we're going to space it out as I said I was going to and we're going to glue that in place as well and then let that completely set up. Now guys, if you don't have this 1 16th inch router bit, um, 
and you don't want to do it the router way to get this kind of a thing here, that's just fine. If you want to do it like the plan state, um, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. You would just, I would suggest using spacer blocks or setup blocks in between each one of your slats to make sure they are perfectly aligned, placing them one at a time, making sure that it is 100% dry before you place the next one in. It is just such a finicky process though. So I find that the router method is much better. So let's get this glued into place and then we're gonna move on to shaping this front grill. Now, before I glue the grill in place here, you can see I have my little spacers that we will glue right in here. Just glue them in place to keep um, our grill properly spaced and we can glue that in there. But before we do that, I want to shape our grill. If we look here on the drawings, we can see that there is the quarter inch radius, same as what there is on the engine compartment here on the grill. And there is around the outside a 1 8 inch radius. I am not a fan of routing um, this kind of a radius on something that is glued together with nothing more than butt end joints. I was considering doing it with the router bit, the bearing guided router bit after this was glued on to give it more strength. But due to the angles here, that's going to cause problems with our bearing and cause problems with our routing. So some things, guys, regardless of how many fancy machines you have, some things are just better off done by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one of our sanding blocks, which is just 180 grit sandpaper mounted on some pieces of three quarter inch MDF. And I'm just going to sand these roundovers by hand, both the 1 8 inch that are around the outside edges and as well the quarter inch to have the profiles match the engine block itself. Now, once you're happy, of course, with the shape of your front grill frame, we're going to glue in these spacers. If you did it this method, it's if you didn't, obviously don't glue in any spacers. Um, and we're going to glue our grill in. And that will get placed right here, just like this. There is the tiniest little bit of play with that. It's not a perfect cut, and I never expected it to be. So just make sure you stand over top of it and check to make sure that it's not crooked, that it looks right from the front. Usually you can trust your eyes with something like this. All right, and there we go. There is the front grill of our truck. Doesn't that look great? And then of course you can just sit that right here on the front of your vehicle. And there we go. There is the engine compartment pretty much done. There is one extra piece here that we did not make. Um, that would be this little tiny piece right here. And that gets glued on the front. It's a trim piece. I'm not even sure if I'm going to add it. Um, I may do a laser embellishment to replace that. But guys, that is a simple cutting the thinner stock on the outside of the blade as I've shown you, do, or shown you how to do before ripping it on the table saw again on the outside of the blade if possible and then just using your miter box to cut it guys so if you want to add that piece by all means do for me i haven't decided yet and that's why i haven't done it well the next thing that i want to work on here is going to be the entire cab of the truck this is going to take a while so we're going to start off with the most simple of pieces being the firewall, the frame spacer, the cab rear panel, the cab floor. Guys, these are simple, simple square cuts and they will all get cut to their final dimension pretty much right off the bat from the thickness of stock that's listed on the plans. My suggestion here is that anything that is the same dimension, in this case, say the firewall and the cab rear panel, which are both three and three quarters of an inch wide, I would suggest that you cut those at the exact same time. Cut them together so that the measurements line up and that even if it's just a tiny bit off, 
at least they're both going to be off and they'll both be equal. But when it comes to things like the door panel here, we need to make a right and a left. For this here, we're going to want to cut a square of a quarter inch thick material, three and a half inches by four inches tall. We'll make two of those because we're going to use a marking template. And for the marking template, we're going to take a pattern we will use spray adhesive and adhere it to some 1 8 inch thick hardboard and we will cut it as closely as we can making sure that it is as close to the original as possible because it will be the basis for all of our other pieces and that there is our template done for our doors both for the uh, driver's side and if we flip it over this would be the passenger side we're going to put this aside for now and uh, we have our cherry pieces cut these are for the doors we'll get back to that in just a minute but we want to turn our attention now to this piece this is our cab rear panel guys all we need to do here is we need to mark out the hole that we're going to cut for the rear window it's as simple as taking the dimensions off of the drawing, transferring them onto this piece of cherry, and then cutting it out at the scroll saw very carefully. The only thing I will point out here is this 1 8 inch radius. The radius is from the center of the circle to the outside, to the very edge of the circle. It's the radius. So in order to figure out what circle template you would want to use for that, you basically double it. So a 1 8 inch radius is a quarter inch diameter circle template. And before too long, we have our back window. Now, something I want to point out, you can see here the burning in this top corner. This is where I started the cut. If you're using cherry, cherry burns very easily. But that's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is I had a dull blade or a blade that wasn't sharp and as soon as I got into this curve I could tell it wasn't cutting right you could smell it and that just comes with experience so guys scroll saw blades are consumables if you're having an issue like this don't try to save the blade save your work get rid of the blade and put a brand new one in there you can see that once I replaced the blade all of the cuts were nice and clean no burning whatsoever so don't be afraid to change your blades. They're considered as consumables. They're disposable. Once they're dull, they're garbage. So there you go. There is the back panel done. Now, now something I would like to point out, kind of a mistake that I made, I made these pieces here. This is the frame spacer. This here is the cab floor. And this here is the firewall, which sits right here. And I made them all out of poplar because that's what I had, because I um, thought that they were not going to be exposed. But if we look here on the drawing, on drawing number four, sheet four of nine, we can see that in fact, this firewall will be exposed. And that's gonna look very odd as being um, poplar when I have everything else in the body cherry. So that's going to look odd. So I'm going to need to recut this piece in cherry to make it all blend in. So that's no big deal. The rest of the pieces are fine though. So now, as I said, we can move on to the door panels and we can mark these out for now if we want. Um, but we're not going to cut anything because the first thing that we want to do actually, believe it or not, is we want to route these details here. Well, I'm going to try to explain how to route this without confusing anybody. And honestly, guys, every time I do this, it confuses me. So hopefully I can give you a reasonable explanation. We need to route these lines here. Now, the only real way that I've ever found to do it with any kind of efficiency and to make it look good is by making a router template. But how do you do that? Well, I have my router set up with a bushing, a routing bushing. This bushing 
has a 7 16 outer diameter. So let me just slide this across here and I'm going to see if I can explain this. This is my bushing. And this will be my router bit. Now, the bushing, as I said, is 7 16 in diameter. That's from edge to edge. So to the center of this bushing, which would also be the center of our bit, you want to divide this in two, and that will give you 7 30 seconds. But that is to the center of the bit. If we want to get right to the edge of the bit right here, we have to subtract half the size of the bit from 730 seconds. So 730 seconds, it's a 1 16th bit, so half of that is 1 32nd. 730 seconds minus 1 32nd is 6 seconds. When you reduce that fraction, you get 3 sixteenths of an inch. I hope that made sense. So 3 16 of an inch, that is the measurement from the edge of our bushing right here to the edge of our router bit, this dimension right here. Now, why is that important? Because when you're routing this line, the edge of your routing bushing or your router bushing has to be riding on um, a pattern that is 3 16 of an inch larger than what this is. You can also do it smaller and have the router bushing run on the inside as long as it's 3 16 3 16 of an inch will bring that 1 16 inch router bit right to the edge of our routing here, making it perfect. So because we know this measurement now of 3 16 of an inch, we're going to take another photocopy of our pattern at 100% we're going to measure out all the way along here at 3 16 of an inch outside of our routed line, and we're going to duplicate that profile. That is going to be our routing template, and we can very easily uh, just adhere this to a quarter inch thick piece of hardboard, cut that out on the line that we draw, and we will be able to route, and we should be able to duplicate the original that way because of the offset of that 7 16 outer diameter router bushing. And that there would be our routing template. Now, what I've done is the outside edges of our piece, left and right, and the bottom lines, I have transferred them all the way around the piece so that we have a way to align um, our door sections when we go to do the routing. So I'm just going to do this one as a test. This is just a piece of hardboard on the exact same dimensions as what our door panels are, quarter inch thick by three and a half by four inches. We're going to line them up here with our layout lines or our alignment lines, I guess, in this case. And I've just got a couple of thin pieces. You can see them sticking out here at the edges. A couple thin pieces of double-sided tape. Now, guys, when you apply the double-sided tape, don't just press it in place. Clamp that up for a couple of minutes, and it will really adhere well with that clamping pressure. So once we get that done, you want to make sure that you have support around the outside of this piece. So you can get some scrap quarter inch pieces um, of material, whether it be these pieces of cherry or what have you, but you want to make sure that your template is supported so that when your router is riding on here, it's not gonna flip it up or tip it. You want to have it to have good support as well. You want this thing clamped in place. So let me get this set up. I'm going to get that clamped in place there to let that double-sided tape do its job. And then I'm going to show you how to route these door panels. Okay, I have everything supported, everything clamped in place. This is going nowhere. And if you notice here, I have cut our template to be much taller than what our piece is. That's to give a waste area for our router to start in. So that can sit right there. You can start your router up and uh, you have a starting point. So what you want to do 
I have made the base of this here on this template 3 16 of an inch lower than what um, the routing is. So this is our stop point. Up here is our start point. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the router, make sure that I'm pressed tight up against the left side of the template. I'm gonna run the router slowly down until I bottom out at this bottom end, and then I'm gonna shut the router off and let it wind down. And now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna sit our router in place, start it up, go up against the right side and all the way down to the bottom on, and then shut it off and let it wind down again. And with that done, let me show you what you end up with. This is our um, mock panel. You can see how well that double-sided tape is holding after the clamping on there. And we'll just get a little bit of a pick here to clean this out. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. So I'm going to take some measurements and test it against our original plan, our original pattern. I could probably even take our template and see if it lines up or not with our routings. And it does at the top, it's hard to see at the bottom, but it definitely lines up at the top. So that looks great. So at this point now that your test piece works, we can now take our originals or our actual pieces of uh, cherry for our model and we can do the routing. Just remember that you need a right and a left. There is no other way about it. You will have to do it just like we did just right now and do this routing on this side. And then once you get that one done, flip the template over and duplicate the exact same thing to make a, uh, an opposite. So let's get that done and uh, I'll see you when you get it finished. And with our left and our right side mounted, we just need to take our template now. This is our marking template. We're going to line it up carefully with the edges. And once we get it lined up, we're gonna trace all the way around for our outside profile and our window. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, but turn our template upside down. Again, lining it up with the edges, trace it out, and then we're gonna cut them at the scroll saw. And for now, that's all she wrote on these doors. Now, you may be wondering, why do the routing first? Guys, you can do the routing last if you want, but from personal experience, I can tell you that there's nothing more disappointing than having everything cut out, going through all the trouble to have all of these cuts done, and then have your double-sided tape slip during routing, have this go sideways on you, and your routing is garbage. So is your entire door. So I have found that because routing these 1 16th wide grooves is basically the riskiest part of destroying the piece here in the process, it's the process that I do first to get it out of the way so that I'm ensured that when everything else is done, I get a good looking piece. So let's do a bit of a dry fit of this cab and see how we make out here. And there we go, the dry fit looks all right. No complaints there. Um, there is a bit of a gap here, but that's because of the rubber bands that are holding this together at the moment. I'm not too concerned. Um, I'm kind of curious as to why the hood is so much higher than what the, the door edge is here, this A pillar. Um, I'm gonna have to look at the plans and see if that's the way it's supposed to go. But as far as the cab itself goes, it's looking great and uh, I can carry on, as far as I'm concerned anyway, with the rest of the cab. All right, well, I discovered what it was that was the problem as to why these were so out of whack on their upper plane. And that's because I forgot to install this little frame spacer here that is on uh, sheet four of sheet nine. So that three eight thick spacer, which actually sits on the frame and raises your cab up, that is what's going to make things level and squared off here. So the dry fit looks good. Um, I'm happy with that. And uh, I guess we can carry on with the rest of the cab interior now that the uh, mystery has been solved. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week's show. 
Guys, we're getting into some of the more difficult pieces now. They're not impossible to make. They just take a little more of a thought process. Case in point being those routed details in the doors of the truck. You really have to think about the process. And I don't want you to go here on the measurements that I have provided you because that's not going to help you. If the outer diameter of your router bushing is not 7 sixteenths of an inch, then these measurements mean nothing. So what you really need to do is take your own measurements of your router bushings. If you're using a quarter inch diameter or a five sixteenths or a seven sixteenths, it doesn't matter what size bushing you're using. What matters is that you do the calculations for the offset to the outside of the bushing to the edge of your router bit. It's not a difficult calculation. It's simply measurements and a little bit of subtraction. And it's a very simple thing to get done. It's just getting through that thought process and doing test cuts. And while it does take quite a bit of extra time to do the test cuts and check everything out and check and double check, the results are well worth it because after all that time, we have some amazing looking doors. They look fantastic. Now I may be adding some laser embellishments to those. I have something in mind that I want to do. I'm just not 100% sure how I want to pull it off. Either way, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an amazing audience base, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that and joining in the community that usually has conversations down below. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope that you're getting a set of these plans. The links are below for both of them. I hope that you're getting a set of these plans and, and building along with me and trying this build for yourself. But more importantly, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. <laughs>